new scan on any of the planning and design side, it sets you up in a very bad position to be successful long term. Uh, so I don't have a ratio I can provide, but do not skimp on the planning, uh, certainly on the design side, uh, because uh, as I've experienced, as you go further in the, in the actual implementation of whatever it is, it's harder and harder to change anything, right? If we lock the load and we're going this path, oh no, maybe, maybe our architecture's not right. Well, yeah, but we're almost done. Yeah, but it's not going to meet the need. We need to go back to step one. And that's really hard for companies to, to recognize. Um, and there's a, a prototype. Prototyping stuff is uh, immensely valuable. And in the software world, it is. Uh, I love it in the software world because you can move and change things so quickly. In the hardware world, like the consumer electronics world, it's not so easy. It, it has. It's like birthing a child. And there's a set period of time that you cannot go any faster than this. It has to be molded. You have to cut metal. You have to test it. And there's a lot of things that need to happen. In the software world, you can create a quick prototype, communicate it, test it, think about it, and then move to the next prototype really quickly. So I think for your guys' purpose in kind of the IT world, I like it personally. Um, I can tell you uh, creating stage servers for, for websites and stuff is because then you can really play and come up with a concept and communicate it well. Uh, and that's part of the design and planning phase um, that you really want to make sure this is what we're doing. Right. And it's understood and documented. Then you can start to move into it. There's a definite uh, great edge between design or from planning the project, designing the project, I know some of the students here will be starting in on, on their first internship ah, uh, yes. experience this next quarter. Do you have any insight or, or uh, suggestions or advice for them as they think about their which internship to choose and, and how to approach that? Absolutely. So it was a requirement uh, when I was a student here. Uh, it sounds like it may still be a requirement, which uh, I think actually benefits you guys tremendously. Uh, I did a couple of internships while I was here before, uh, uh, working uh, with the business to do an e-commerce site and a couple other projects. My advice is go in uh, and you get out of it what you put into it. It's going to be painful. It's, it's going to be one of those, uh, I got to do it. But at the end of the day, in my, my venture out, my internship, uh, when I was at the U, led to of your career at a company launching an amazing product. And it was my foot in the door. I learned a lot, I contributed a lot, and I was valued a lot. And there's a lot of companies around this area that are looking for that and people to step in and say, hey, I can bring value here and do that. I mean, you still have to bring value and be wide open to opportunities if you want. Um, I'm not sure all kind of the different internships, uh, the spectrum that you guys can be pursuing, uh, but put into it a lot of effort. Uh, take studies that you have, take the opportunity to ask the, the experts here, the questions there. Uh, I often found myself you know, in the internship, you know, trying to align up some of the studies I'm working, say, hey, this is an interesting area I'm learning the book, I'm gonna go deeper in it because it's gonna benefit my internship side. Um, but there's also skills that you learn in the all the ones that I talked about, right? The definition. How do you work with somebody to understand what they're trying to solve, right? How do you get what their problem is and what is your solution to be able to help them? How do you get aligned with whatever the, the objective of the project or the team of the company? And then really, how do you start to try and become an owner or a knowledge base of it? Uh, so those are kind of my uh, recommendations on the don't put them off. Don't uh, look at them as kind of not necessary. After the fact, I think we'll look back and be like, that was exciting because I was actually doing real work. Uh, I think uh, you know, creating cool uh, widgets and projects is fun and exciting, but creating and solving a real problem, that's even more exciting. And in some cases, you'll get paid for it. I know 
know some of them I had worked, but then I did actually get uh, paid them too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, the internships that you took, um, did you choose them because you thought uh, that this was the area that you wanted to go into and that you liked you liked that whatever company that you were going to work for? Uh, you know, one of them, yes. One of the internships was an e-commerce site. I'm very interested in building an e-commerce engine. There was a lot of customization that the customer, the client warranted. So there was, uh, yes, a lot of interest that I had on that. Um, another internship that I had, which was at my career, I had no clue what really it included. But I went in with the opportunity. I can learn and I can apply and stuff. Um, and that's really, I think, a lot of companies are looking for people that want to come in and that are eager and hungry. And in some cases, they're very specific. I really need somebody to do this. And you want to understand that. Back to the definition. What are they looking for? What are you looking for? Uh, and sometimes you can bring more to the table than what they're looking for. And that's to your So I'm in, now I'm, I'm back into kind of where I'm a little more comfortable is with, with technology. Uh, emerging wise, there's a, a social media is the big uh, interesting area. I've explained it, 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 it's basically a conversation tool. Right? How do you have a conversation uh, in a kind of a unique way for businesses with their clients and customers, but certainly for, for us as uh, friends and families to communicate. Uh, social media is going to be very important part. It's not a bad. It's uh, an uh, communication tool that's happening. There's a variety of tools uh, out there to manage social media. Um, of course, there's a lot of business to be made as that tool, as the communication channel. Uh, we are going to use that uh, pretty extensively in, in how we reach and create demand. Uh, in terms of e-commerce and, and stuff like that, there's a lot of platforms out there um, that, that you can buy, you can customize, modify. That is also in some ways becoming kind of a commodity. Um, you know, I can switch from this engine to that engine. It's worth, no question. But it's all it's doing is, is allowing me to transact. And um, you're seeing companies start to compete on level of service. Downtime, no downtime. If there's an issue, we'll fix it within an hour. Uh, so, in terms of web technology, uh, HTML5 is uh, a very interesting area, an area I'm still learning uh, myself because it, it's a standard. But the big question is, is everybody going to follow the standard? Right? And we can't wait for the standard, we still have to move. So, you often find companies have to make trade offs. Certainly, technology in the app space, the hardware. When I was first a student, it was like, why does my phone just have a browser? Why can't I just surf the web on my phone? Right? And that's when we had these mobile app web sites. Uh, a lot of sites are moving away from this. In fact, uh, one of the things I'm working on is actually uh, catering a mobile site, but not managing a separate site. So, how do you architect something? Good on a tablet now. Something completely new in the past two years, right? A little bit smaller than a computer screen, it's a lot more mobile, and where do people use it? And what are the standards people are using? Android, iPad, um, other contenders, uh, other non contenders. The technology, uh, you know, I can't even say anything is definite. Uh, in two years' time, it's going to be completely different. Uh, I'll be amazed as well. From, uh, when I worked in, in consumer electronics, the speed of innovation, your company has to move at that same speed. If you don't, you're at a sore disadvantage. Uh, and I can definitely say from a retina display perspective, the quality of the display blows my mind. And I know I'll continue to be blown with you know, OLEDs and stuff that's coming out. So. Blown with what? OLED? OLED technology? What is that? Oh, LED. Organic LEDs, yes. It's, uh, again, a whole area of display technology that a lot of companies are spending a lot of money on. What's 
organic about it? It's actually using organic material. So they're mimicking uh, things in the real world that uh, animals and bugs have. And they actually create displays that will have a lifetime uh, associated to them. But the quality of the display is just so like those, those bugs that have that translucent yeah. uh, change yeah. in them? Yeah, so you may have heard of Marisol, which is basically no backlight. It takes the light that you see here, and then it creates the color and reflects it back into your eyes. Uh, but it takes no power. It's, it's using reflective light. Yes, yeah, a little tangent, uh, but uh, certainly, if there's any other questions, uh, yeah. So um, I've been focusing in my time here at Cascadia on web design. Okay. Um, and so with the, the emergence of the presence of social media uh -huh. and all of the functionality that you can get from your Facebook site and your LinkedIn site, um, where is the role of websites now? Are there, I see them kind of starting to take a step back in their prominence and it's more of a social media space driving traffic to your e-commerce site so you can get a click and buy something. But your, your website really isn't the, the, the focus of it anymore. Now it's the, the social space. Yeah, so it's ironic because there is a balance that you have to, from a marketing perspective, you have to have a website. It's, it's in some ways, and there's still so many businesses that either don't have a website or have very poorly designed website. So uh, web design is, a trade is not going to disappear. Uh, and there's a lot of tools out there. I mean, everything doesn't have to be custom anymore. Uh, there's tools out there. In fact, WordPress is a tool that I uh, highly recommend. Uh, there's a, a site called ThemeForest.com. T-H-E-M-E? Yep, T-H-E-M-E Forest.com. And uh, once you understand the principles of how things work, there's things that you can start to purchase and then modify beyond it. So everything's not custom. The cost to develop here in the States is very high. So that's why there's a lot of development that, that goes overseas. But the quality and design uh, in the States is still very, very high. So that's why there's still a lot of, a lot of jobs and people working at technology companies because that, that quality and knowledge and expertise is grown and built. Websites are still a must. E-commerce engines depends on the business, depends on what the objective is. Social media, I always say, is still a conversation. How do you, as a big company or a small company, have a good conversation with your customers, your prospective customers? And that's what social media, I think, is really doing. It's enabling a more uh, conversational tone to a company, right? a softer side of the company. Oh, you know, I'm gonna name big names here, but a big company is no longer just a big corporate company. There's people that work there, and there's people that are like you there. And social media allows them to be able to communicate. You know, hey, look, check this out, this is what we're doing. So I think it complements it. I don't think it will replace it. Uh, and I think a lot of companies have to look at how that strategy works together. And that's something I, I work very closely with in my team as well, is how do we complement and help the social media drive traffic with the objective we want to sell stuff, right? So we have analytics to be able to tell us how many people clicked, you know, I like this, and then they went and they actually bought it, right? That's the holy grail. You look at uh, TV advertising, right? Or even billboard advertising. You can't really understand the ROI. You can't trace it directly to a purchase. Social media now, still allows you it's a link in. Uh, but there's still a lot around search. People are always going to search for stuff. And how do you, you know, be ranked well from a search engine perspective? So in your design, how do you also incorporate you know, new things that are happening in, in the industry? Uh, search engine optimization, SEO, is still vastly important. A lot of websites are not very well designed for SEO. That's, a, I think, a hotbed for a lot of designers to be able to go in, uh, consult in kind of that, that mode, saying, hey, there's certain elements that Google and being signals that they say are good, and how you can go in and start to help them and track the 
improvements. That's delivering value. One more, yes. Two questions. Uh, perfect. Number one. Sure, sure. Well, we do, um, and again, Twitter is one of the early social tools, right? Uh, limited uh, was a boundary of the technology, but it certainly shouldn't be limited to 140 characters. Uh, we do use it. Uh, mostly it is, um, I don't work on the community side. In fact, we're hiring. We're looking for somebody to manage a community side, which would be Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Uh, how we've currently used in the past is really kind of updates, you know, trying to, this is what we're doing, check this out. Um, look at uh, our latest product when we do an announcement. Um, there does need to be a strategy though for it. And we recognize that, and that's part of our intent of getting somebody to be dedicated and focused on it. Uh, yes, currently. Uh, but the goal is to be more of a conversation. So somebody could use Facebook, and you've got a segment of people that almost use Twitter. So there's virality driving people. Exactly. It's a channel to drive the crazy. Yeah. What's your second question? Well, now, the first one's the first one. Do we use the second style? Yes. And since we are a consumer products company, um, one of our, our clear objectives is to start to leverage social media even more. Um, Build a relationship, establish a rhythm, right? Uh, conversation is only as good as when there is a back and forth. Uh, and sometimes if it's just one way, not a really fun conversation. Uh, we do have actually another brand uh, that, that our company owns called Munitio, M U N I T I O dot com. And they sell earbuds. And we have a very, very uh, strategic plan around our social media for that, that uh, uh, business. And it's actually very successful. Uh, over 100,000 likes. So we are uh, driving that as a 